Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy YouTube Blue coming back at you again, and mm, <laughs> it was game day Sunday, but not for the Dallas Cowboys. Unless you was living under a rock, or you just choose not to <laughs> think about it anymore, which you know most of us have tried to do, I believe. Um, our team played on Thursday. <laughs> and got our ass handed to us by the Buffalo Bills. Or should I say Cole Beasley for that matter? But, you know, game is over with. You know, we're, we're moving forward to <laughs> this week. We're playing Thursday night against the Chicago Bears in Chicago. And it's going to be a cold one. So any of the guys dealing with a bunch of ailments and things of that nature, they're going to be feeling it. Um, because that cold hit your bones and it, it just hit different. It hit different. When that cold hits you a certain way. But before I get into that. Um, <laughs> uh, Cowboys didn't ha make a signing. So as you guys know. Connor Williams did tear his ACL in that game. and Which, which is why you saw him go out and come back in. And I was like whoa coach something ain't right. Took him out again. And Sua Filo uh, finished the game for him. Um, but they signed a versatile guard. Um, he's a four year veteran. Uh, he spent the first three years of his uh, career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His name was uh, Caleb Beno, Beno, Benanock. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Caleb Benanock. Um, he bounced around um, this last season um, with New England and I think the, the, the Packers. And he's a free agent as of now, and um, the Cowboys picked him up. Now, he, he plays guard. He can also play center, so he's kind of versatile. So we got a couple of guys like that as backups that, that are versatile like that, which is all important on this offensive line because we can get injuries in any given place. We have a really good offensive line, but when these guys get injured, they get injured. So um, just to kind of save face on that, um, that's, what we, that's what we are with that one. Um, he had a, He's a four-year pro, like I said. He's a, He has 22 career starts. And like I said, the first three were with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so um, that's where he started his career. Um, he's going to basically take the place of Connor Williams. Not starting. Suofilo is going to Suofilo is going to start, but he's going to be Suofilo's um, backup for right for the rest of the season. So um, that's what we got there. Now, fun fact with that: him and Suofilo actually um, were college teammates at UCLA. So um, there's kind of they're kind of familiar with each other. So um, hopefully they're um, them knowing each other, they can kind of gel with each other and maybe that can help with the offensive line and things of that nature, but we'll see what happens. Um, also some other news, the Dallas Cowboys also tried out three kickers today. Um, you know, they say that they have full confidence in Brett Maher, but if you have full confidence in your kicker, you don't at this point in the season, um, bring in three random kickers, but you can't just say that, like, as a coach, as an owner, as a GM, and, and anybody in the front office, you can't go out there talking about your players saying that, oh, you can't just say, oh, this player sucks, so we're just going to grab somebody else and hopefully he can take his spot. Like, whether you feel that way or not, it's not, you, as an employer, you can't say that. It's almost like you work in a regular job. Your boss can't just come out and just in the open and just say that, oh, this 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 um, employee that I have is trash. I'm getting ready to fire him tomorrow. Normally, it's kind of hush-hush. When it happens, it happens. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much um, with that situation. Now, um, so the three kickers are Nick Rose, and, and he's a veteran. I know some of you guys have heard of him. Uh, Nick Rose, Austin McGinnis. And Austin McGinnis, right now, he plays in the XFL for the Dallas team. So, you know, um, uh, I don't even think their season started yet. So um, I think that if they were to get him, <laughs> you kind of just plucked him before the season even started. I think so. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm still kind of new with the XFL and the, the things that they're doing. So, um, And uh, Tristan uh, Viscano, um, that's the third guy that they got. So some of these guys, uh, we'll, we'll see. Now, um, they worked them out. If one of them sticks, one of them sticks. If not, <laughs> we still got Brett Maher for the rest of the day. Brett Maher had a really bad game on, on, on Thursday, and it cost us some really some serious points. And um, one thing is a kicker, you can't miss outside of 
you know, that that yardage. Now, I, I I always felt that when the Cowboys got rid of Dan Bailey for Brett Maher, I just felt like it was very premature. And I just think that it was it didn't make sense for them to go ahead and just release him and 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 do that. I just I just didn't I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree with that at all. Um but I will say that <sighs> They they kind of jumped the gun on that. They on they they definitely jumped the gun on that. Because you remember when the situation happened, Dan Bailey was going through. A, I think he had like a hamstring and a groin injury. First of all, when you're a kicker, anything in your inner thigh area, groin area that hurts or you pull something, it's gonna affect the way that you kick because the way they kick, they kick straight up. And, and, you know, you need all of that leverage to get. So you need all that leg power. If you have anything that's that's short of that, you're not, it's going to affect the way that you kick. Now, I was always a fan of Dan splitting Bailey. That was my guy. Um, when they when they cut him, I was I was devastated. I was like, really? For Brett Maher? And I knew that Brett Maher was inconsistent coming in, even though, you know, he was coming from the CFL. And I just, like, I just, I just, no, mm -mm, nope. No, um, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that one. They gave up on Bailey a little too fast because they saw that he was becoming inconsistent. Yes, he was, but it was primarily because of his injury. Then you let him go. He gets signed by the Vikings, what, like a week later? And now he's playing pretty decent for the Vikings. He's making more damn kicks than Brett Maher is. So that's all I'm saying. But, you know, it is what it is. And then we ended up playing them and they beat us. So... It happens like the karma happens with the Cowboys. We get rid of players and they go to other teams and come back and whoop our ass. I eat his last game with Cole Beasley. He was all over the place. Cole Beasley ain't never played that good with us. Maybe he had like one game over a hundred yards uh, receiving. He played us one time against with Buffalo, and he only been gone a year. And, and that's and that's y'all act like y'all don't know Cole Beasley. So y'all didn't go in there and prep for Cole Beasley. You didn't you didn't game plan for Cole Beasley, knowing damn well this defense knows how to play against Cole Beasley because most of these players were on this team when Cole Beasley were here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just that that just just little stuff like that. It's like come on, man. That's elementary stuff. I don't even know why I try with this team no more. I'm done. I'm heading out. But Anyway, it is what it is. So, on to uh, regular Cowboy news. So, we were talking about this whole coach situation, right? Now, everybody's been talking about this coach situation. We've been talking about it ever since, shit, for the last couple of years. Um, Jason Garrett is now 10th season with the decade with the team. Have not smelled an NFC Championship game. Only has, what, two or three playoff games in that amount of time? Is ridiculous to me. With if you could just count all the Pro Bowlers and all the great players that have been on this team in the last decade, that was under Coach Garrett. Everybody keeps coming at me. There's people that come at me and talk about, oh E two, you always talking about the coaches, but you never talk about the players. Yes, I but I do, I do. I always say that the players need to execute, but it starts with coaching first. If you have changed everything on your team. You changed your coordinators. You changed your defensive scheme. Because remember, we went back and forth from the 3-4 to the 4-3 in the last decade. Like two or three times now. Um, don't forget about that. I always thought that, the, but the scheme they're in now is fine. It's just that Marinelli, the way that he's doing it, needs to change. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, my thing is this. If you have, if your players keep changing, and your staff keep changing. It's a different quarterback. Tony Romo not here no more. And even when Tony Romo was here, he did his own thing. He didn't even need a coordinator because he knew this offense so well because he was well-versed in it at that point in his career that, you know what I'm saying, he could make plays. He could read. A lot of those those games, one, is because of Tony Romo. He saved J Jason Garrett a lot. That was all Tony Romo. That wasn't no Jason Garrett and the, and the offensive coordination that they were doing back then. No. No no young quarterback could have came in during that era and been successful with this team because they wouldn't have known the offense to be able to control it like that. Dak Prescott is just getting to the point in his career where he can 
control and take a, but they still haven't gave him 100% control. That's what y'all need to understand too, that Dak is doing what he's told to do. He's not doing everything on his own. You see what I'm saying? So because of that reason, you got to blame the coaching for that. And it rises and falls on Jason Garrett regardless of the situation. And I don't want to hear nobody say, oh, well, he's not out there making the plays. I've already said many times that player execution matters too. But even when these players are playing their hardest and doing the damn thing, and, and, and for the most part, for the last, under Jason Garrett, they have played for him. They have. And technically they still are. But you just after a while, you just get tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. And it's just like, okay, what you're saying to us is not working. You know what I mean? Like, if... If me as a as a as just a regular fan, as a nobody, can come out here and say, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? And when I say certain things and when they actually do it, it actually works. How come you don't, don't do that? I'm nobody's coach. And I don't think that I would probably, even myself, be good enough to be an NFL coach. I, I'm not saying that I would. But, and I'm not patting myself on the back at all for that because I'm, I'm, that is not what I want to do. But all I'm saying is this, if if me, even with my knowledge of football, you know, playing the sport, can see that the things that you're not doing, you should be doing, at what point are you not even looking at other NFL teams and seeing the stuff that they're doing that you're very capable of doing with your offense and defense, Is but you're, you're doing the total opposite and you're just being stubborn and we're just going to do it our way. And when things work, you stop doing it. I don't understand that. I don't. I don't get it. So everything has changed on this team, but the coach. And my biggest thing is you can't just bring anybody in here to coach this team. I've heard people say, "Oh, let's just get anybody. Anybody's better than Gary. Let's let's pick up a ham sandwich. That could be a coach." Now I know we're joking when we say that, but at the end of the day, you can't just bring anybody in here. I don't want Josh McDaniels. I don't want some of these other guys because, again, you're going to be in the same situation that you already are. And please, guys, stop talking about bringing back Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switzer. Somebody said uh, wake up Tom Landry from the dead and bring him back. Just crazy stuff. Like any coach that played for this team previously ain't coming back and coaching this team because they already know. They can't work under Jerry Jones. The problem that I have is if you get rid of Jason Garrett, you're going to come back in here and get another lame duck coach that is okay with you still controlling things. Jerry Jones has allowed his next head coach to be a head coach. And to be a head coach, you have to make the decisions when it comes to his staff and anybody that's under him as head coach. He has to be in control of that. If he's not, that's not being a head coach because a head coach means, key word, head you're the head of the people that are under you. So if you don't have control over that, how the hell can you do your job correctly? Think about it. It's it's not rocket science. It's common damn sense, y'all. It's common sense. So if I'm if I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, um, if you work for a job and your job is to be a coordinator, you're coordinating like like ten people. You have ten people under your roster, but your that your higher up is telling you, um. If this person does this, that, and the third, you can't do anything about it. You just got to just let it ride. So what is my job exactly? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? I just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make football sense. Even Jimmy Johnson said himself, it's like, it's not going to work. You're not going to get a guy to come in here to do that. Because Lincoln Riley, we all want Lincoln Riley. But Lincoln Riley ain't going to come in here with that nonsense. Lincoln Riley is out there living his best life in Oklahoma, making probably good money because he's he's getting that sponsorship money. He's getting that extra stuff that you don't get in the NFL being a head coach. Now, you can, but it depends on what type of team you're on. Now, these guys are coming to do interviews with Jerry, but when, they, when Jerry tells them what the stipulations are, they be like, all right, I'm going to head out. Peace. But then Jerry Jones, you know, he's a willer and dealer. He he gonna try to he gonna try to get you. Oh, I'll pay you whatever. Now, does the money outweigh the headache of being the coach of Dallas Cowboys? Because I tell you one thing: as much as I love the Dallas Cowboys, I would not be the coach. Because you talking about the scrutiny that you get. I, I mean, I almost feel sorry for Carrot Top. 
Almost. Almost. But again, Dak Prescott gets it. You're gonna you're gonna get talked about because you are <laughs> the leader of your team. And that's just the way it is. And I feel sorry for Dak because he has to listen to all that crap all day, every day. When he's out here fighting hard and, and throwing his body out there and busting his ass every day to be the quarterback of his team and try to win games for his team and try to, you know, do the things that Lamar Jackson are doing, but the team is not allowing him to do it. Because you remember in 2016 and 2017, when Dak was a rookie and, and sophomore in this league, they were allowing him to run. They were allowing him to flip and do all the things. Now, granted, maybe maybe right now he's not doing it on purpose because he ain't got no contract. He ain't trying to hurt himself. Now, that's an option. But I feel like I'm sitting here and I'm watching Baltimore play San Fran, and I'm like, this is a beautiful game. I wish our team could play a, t a clean game like this. Yeah, there was some turnovers, but that's because two defenses went hard at each other. I'm watching Lamar Jackson utilize the hell out of his RPO, utilizing the hell out of his read option, his fakes. Quick sc bubble screen passes to his tight ends. Making touchdowns. Running one in for himself. To beat the 49ers. Hey, <laughs> and have the best kicker in the league. But... I look at this Dallas Cowboy team, the thing that frustrates me the most. If this Dallas Cowboy team, if these players sucked, if like we had just a group of saps on this team that weren't good at all, that couldn't play, then I'd be like, okay, whatever. I wouldn't even trip. I'd be like, we deserve to be 6-6 six and six and 500. We deserve it. But because of the fact that we have all this talent on this team, you went out and got Robert Quinn. You went out and got Randall Cobb. You went out and got Michael Bennett. You got pro bowlers on this offense and this defense. You have the first offense in the league, a top 10 defense, and you can't bust a mother great. You can't beat the Jets. You can't beat the Bills. And I know the Bills got a, uh, um, and, and shout out to the Bills. Um, much respect for them. But your roster is still better than theirs overall. There's no reason why you should have lost that game. Because when you started that game, they started out strong and hard and they were winning. Then all of a sudden, you just threw it all out the window. The defense forgot how to tackle. I also think that Marinelli, his scheme is just old. He's just tired. That Tampa 2 got to go. They're going to have to do something different. They're going to have to do different. They're going to have to get a little bit exotic. They're going to have to stop with the simplicity and and um, make it difficult a little bit. You got smart guys on this defense. We don't have dumb guys on this defense anymore. So you, you, get, you get these guys rolling. And again, we have a lot of young players on this team. And discipline is what we are lacking. That discipline is not there. It's not there. You could tell. You could tell. Because they think that they won a game before they even won a game. Because they, it's Hollywood. Dallas, living and working and breathing and playing for the Dallas Cowboys is like Hollywood. Everybody loves you. You're the Dallas Cowboys. You're in the news all day, every day. You could be a nobody on the team and you're in, you're in the limelight. Must be nice. But you, got, you still got to win the damn games. You still got to win the games. So at the end of the day, stop doing that dumb stuff and win these games. Because <laughs> the Eagles gave you a gift. <laughs> you know why? Because the Eagles lost today. And they lost to the Dolphins. They gave up 37 points. And the Dolphins were down 14. And they let, the, they let them Dolphins swim right in there and beat them. So um, Eagle fans that follow me. I don't want to hear nothing. I went bird game, bird game, my homie, bird game. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing out of none of y'all. Because y'all talk about us, but y'all lost to the Dolphins. Y'all lost to the Dolphins. Y'all lost to the Dolphins. Don't say nothing to me.
Don't say a damn thing to me. Y'all lost to the Dolphins. But neither here nor there. They dropped the five and seven. Hey, and their fans are burning Carson Wentz jerseys. <laughs> we ain't burning nothing over here. We still down for our team. Yeah, you might have some foolish Cowboy fans that, that don't like that. But it is what it is. Um, but I'm always I'm always gonna love my team regardless. But I'm gonna I'm always gonna try to encourage them and say what they should be doing. And hopefully one day they will do it. Um, one more thing though. Um. So, like I was saying with the whole coaching thing, stop with the whole former coach thing. That's not gonna happen. Um, I'm, I'm the only thing I'm worried about with this seriously, like on on, the, on a serious tip. I don't want him to get a coach that comes in here that's gonna be a lame duck because you might as well keep Jason Garrett in this case. If you're gonna go get a coach, you need to make a splash. He needs to drop that cash because. Some of you guys that don't know this, coaches' salary is not on the same thing as the players. The players are basically played, paid by money from the NFL. So, you know, the salary cap. Every team has a certain amount of dollar. That money goes for the players. The coaches' money, the coaching staff money comes from the team's revenue and the owner's money. So, Jerry Jones is the richest <laughs> owner in the league. So, you can pull out the ducats and Jerry Jones could get whoever he wants to coach this team. Let's, let's not get that confused. He can get whoever he wants for the right price. But the problem is there's like, there's been one trade in the NFL. And I believe that was when, um, um, John Gruden got traded to the bucks. And then they also traded third round pick. I don't know if you can do that anymore. That stuff doesn't happen. That's only happened once, and that probably will never happen again. You can't trade coaches. That doesn't happen. So get that out your mind, guys. So it's – you either got to get somebody from college and bring them up, but it's got to be the right person. And 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 I don't want Josh McDaniels. I heard that name being fl flown around. Just because they've been under Bill Belichick does not mean anything because I'm going to tell you, um, look at Matt Patricia. What is he doing with the Lions? I understand that Matt Stafford is injured, but what is he doing with the Lions? This ain't his first year with them either. So they've been mediocre at best. So I don't want that. I want a coach that's going to come in here that knows how to deal with a quarterback like D Dak Prescott and knows how to deal with a young coordinator like Kellen Moore. Because I still want Kellen Moore to call these plays because the brilliance in him is just starting. And you can see a little bit of it. But the problem is Jason Garrett is keeping him. It's almost like... He's a suit. He's in a suitcase, and and Jason Garrett keep trying to pack him in a suitcase. That's what it is, and he keep trying to pop out, but Jason Garrett keep putting him back in that suitcase. So let let these young coaches grow. Let Mark Colombo, the offensive line coach, grow because he's been on this team, and he's good. He was good as a player, and he's good as a coach. John Kitna doing a damn good job with Dak Prescott. But I think what needs to change is the head coach and Merrill Nelly got to go. I think that if, see, some of you guys think that Chris Richard needs to go. Mm -mm. Chris Richard is not calling. He, he didn't come up with that. He's still running Merrill Nelly's defense. Remember that. If Merrill Nelly goes, that defense, go, that scheme goes with him. Then you give Chris Richard that defensive coordinator position he becomes that coordinator he brings his own scheme in there that way um he can do the things that he wants to do he's just calling plays off of what marinelli has that's all he's doing right now he's only doing what he can so think about things before you guys start trying to clear house because everybody don't need to go it's only a certain amount of people that need to go and i know that when certain coaches come into a team they um they want their staff but we'll see what happens but just, just some food for thought. Just a little bit of tidbit for you guys to um, think about. I just wanted to just put that in your ear. Let that buzz a little bit. But um, thanks again, all my subscribers. Appreciate you. If you're new to the channel, go on there and hit that subscribe button. Uh, support your boy because, again, you know, I, 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 I'm still here. <laughs> it's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.